Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Racing the Races. So today hasn't gone to plan. Um, the Skeletons have won one of their races that we highlighted him for. Uh, they've won one of the races at Newbury. The race that we didn't go for them. Um, we didn't go for anything in the race, but Helton and won at a short price. The other three have been really well supported. Um, Mount Tempest, a much shorter price, nearly went off favourite. Lindy Riley went off favourite. Um, Cartoon and Co, really well supported. All running quite flat, to be honest. They were very disappointing efforts. Never know what to make of when you get a horse that's really well supported that you've selected. Are you on the right lines and they just ran flat? Or did you pick the horse that everyone spotted as being potentially well handicapped or looking like they'd been planned for a race um, when actually it wasn't? I generally think that um, it's the former. You were on the right horses. It just wasn't to be today. Um, so we'll probably be backing a few of those uh, going forward still. Um, so moving on to tomorrow, there are some racing. At, there are some races tomorrow at Ascot that I quite like, um, and I'm going to go through those now. Starting off with the 2:45 at Ascot and <laughs> 2:45, yes, the 2:45 at Ascot, and we are going to go for the Dan and Harry tra Harry Skelton trained and ridden um, Karush. So Karush was one of our horses that we liked um, alongside Cartoon and Co. If they crept into the um, Boodles Juvenile Handicap Paddle at the Chatham Festival. They didn't. Um, I imagine Karouche might drift now because of that another poor run from a Dan Skelton horse. Um, but I really like some of uh, Karouche's form, including when winning on debut, won really impressively from star turn in a juvenile maiden hurdle. I then think they went to Cheltenham to see how good the horse was. Um, bearing in mind he only won off 11 to 8 that day. In a race that if he'd won, he'd have probably ended up in the Triumph Hurdle. Um, he didn't, he fell, he wasn't going to win that day um, when falling at the last, but he was only a length down. Then I think Chepstow was all about getting him a handicap mark and it kind of went, well it went wrong with the Boodles in mind. Um, they ran him against older horses uh, in a novice hurdle. Yes he was getting weight but I think he would, um, I think they were disappointed with what happened there. They got beat at one to four. He was going really well when he found nothing off the bridle. Yeah, I just think they probably left a lot of work in the horse that day, thinking we're going to get a decent handicap mark, taking on the older horses, we're going to get in the boodles. They didn't, um, and they come here instead for a decent price. You can see it's worth 20 grand to win it, and obviously uh, Dan and Harry Skelton definitely want to be winning races now um, with the trainer's title up for grabs. I think you might get fours if you wait a little bit, if you don't have an 888 Sport account, um, because I think the last couple of runs from Dan Skelton Horses have been a bit disappointing, but I do think he's still the one to beat in this race. Um, that's Karush. Moving on to the 320 at Ascot, the LK Bennett Handicap Chase is worth 20 grand to the winner. Five runners. I mean, there's got to be a some better handicapped horses over two mile. Um, that could be running here and the trainers have just ignored the race because it's not at Cheltenham. It's not the Cheltenham Festival. 20 grand to win this. Now, I'm going to take a bit of a chance. Um, we are going to go for the Harry Skelton. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to go for the Dan Skelton trained horse. But we're going to take on Freya Darm. Freya Darm has been one of our horses we've liked uh, for a little while. But he does look very inconsistent. Um, some of his form has been good, some of it has been disappointing. You could argue that, you know, his second to Boot Hill off 133 was a very good effort considering he returns here off 131. I'm just hoping that they might set it up though for their other horse, um, Walking Clover. So, Walking Clover caught my eye um, earlier this season when running over two and a half at Cheltenham, finishing fourth behind La Mauson. La Mauson. Um, in a race that the horse was far too keen, walking clover. They're dropping back in trip. I think um, she's going to run a much bigger race here over a shorter trip. I think they're going to go faster. I think she should settle out the back, and I do think she's well handicapped. She's had wind surgery as well, and she's got the hood on. There's so many positives there, I think. Tristan takes three off as well. We thought she was well handicapped off 1-2-2. Two, two. She's running off 118. Tristan takes another three off. She's running off 115 effectively. There's so much to like about her. If they go plenty fast enough here and she settles, I think she could upset Fred Arm 
um, for Dan and Harry Skelton. Dan won't be too bothered because um, he'll have still won the race. Harry will be disappointed, but he's not actually trying to win anything, whereas um, Dan obviously is trying to win something. So I'm hoping that the, the, the Skeltons do win this, but not with Freya Darn, but with Walking Clover instead. Moving on to the 355, um, the Novices Handicap Hurdle, and there's a horse that I'm quite keen on here, to be honest, at a bigger price than what I think they should be. And that is Rebel Intentions, who's available at 9-1 to 1 at the moment. Rebel Intentions probably ran his best race a few runs ago, three runs ago, when finishing third behind Scalamac, Lieth, and Seathin. Now, Scalamac, Lieth, after winning at Ascot, um, has since come out and finished second at Ascot, and then ran okay at Sandown in a um, feature handicap. Went off the 7-2 favourite that day for a feature handicap um, and was beaten. But I thought the effort behind Top Cloud was a very good effort from Scalamac Leith. Seathbin hasn't quite franked that form. Um, he was a bit disappointing last time out at Utoxta, but to be fair, the time before that, he did go um, and frank that form. I'm saying he, I think is a she. No, it's not, it is a he. When winning at Warwick, um, beating Faye Val. That came, so, so that horse is up nine since winning that. Scalamac Leath is up, um, just getting the numbers. Was winning off 1 1 2, it's now rated 1 2 3, so he's up 11. 11 and 9 for the front two. Uh, Rebel Intentions runs here off 102, the same mark as when finishing third um, in this race. So effectively, he, if they took each other on again, Scalamac. Uh, Leith and Seafin. Rebel Intentions would be £9 better off with Seafin and £11 better off with Scalamac Leith and was only beaten a few lengths. Yes, he's disappointed since. He was very disappointing um, for us at Ascot on his return over 2 mile 5 and then went to Huntington over 2 mile 7 in a chase. You can ignore the chase. Clearly, fences don't work. Um, and maybe at Ascot it was just too short when running over 2 mile 6 or 2 mile 5.5. Probably things just happened a bit quick. He goes back up in trip to the three mile trip where you could argue he's run his best performance this season. Um, he's also beaten Ed Keeper here at uh, Ascot and I think that's very strong form and he's one I'm, I'm quite keen on tomorrow. As I said, he is available at nine to one at the moment. And finally, the last one is in the last race of the day, the 5.05 um, and you'll be pleased to know that it's not a Harry Skelton horse. It, it's not uh, get a tonic. It is our Coob. Now, Arkub, obviously, uh, we highlighted when finishing third at Kempton, be, uh, sorry, at Ascot, behind Mott Hill and Bad. I thought was given plenty to do and was given a very um, interesting ride by uh, Alice Stevens. I don't think it was the strongest of efforts. Then went to Doncaster, went up in trip, um, ran on soft ground, and everything went wrong. Went off five to two, um, yeah, j just hated the extra trip and the... And the um, going. Drops back in trip now, back to 2 mile 5. They obviously think the horse does stay further, but as I said, drops back in trip, back to um, Ascot, where he ran so well. Bryony keeps the ride. I think this is the, the time to catch Arkub. I think he's going to run a really big race here. And he's, I thought he would be priced up favourite for this, and he's not. Currently available at 7s, obviously 15 to 2, but that's the outlier, so we don't say that. Uh, currently available at sevens, and you can see I'm refreshing the page to demonstrate that these prices are available. So many um, analysts this week have gone, oh, I really like so and so at 14 to 1, or I really like so and so at 9 to 1. That price was not available when they were talking about it. It was previously, you know, an hour before, but they then talk up prices that are unavailable, and then when they go and win, if they go and win, they get to shout about a 9 to 1 winner. It was never 9s when you selected it or when you recorded the video. It was five to one, four to one when you recorded the video, um, but you're just claiming the nines because at some point during the day it was nine to one, which is ridiculous. But anyway, so my four for tomorrow are Karush uh, for Harry Skelton. I think that is a juvenile with plenty of um, work in his mark. I like Walking Clover. Hopefully we'll settle better with the um, visor on and the wind surgery. I think we'll see him run a much better, see her run a much better race. I like Rebel Intentions back at this course. Um, his form behind Scalamac Leath looks very strong. And finally, uh, Arkub, who also returned to Ascot, where he probably ran his best race for a long time, 
went third behind Mott Hill and Bad in a feature handicap. This looks easier. Um, the step up and trip isn't too far and the better going will clearly suit as well.